Welcome back to Fairy Tales Knowledge 9, The Frog Prince, Part 2. Let's review a little bit. We have our main character, the frog. We started our story with this picture. Think about it. What do you see? The little girl playing with her gold ball. She threw it up in the air and what happened? That's right, it fell into the well. She asked the frog to get it, but the frog wanted something in return. What did the frog want? He wanted to be her friend forever and to be loved. After agreeing to be the frog's friend, the frog dived down into the cold water of the well to get the gold ball. But was the princess really planning to be the frog's friend? The frog brought that ball back up and gave it to the princess and the princess ran off. The frog was like, wait, stop. The princess didn't listen. She was not keeping her promise. At the castle that night at dinner, there was a knock on the door and it was the frog. The king was very disappointed that his daughter made a promise and was not keeping it. He told his daughter that promises are meant to be kept and to let that frog inside. That is where we stopped our story. Let's talk a little bit before we continue our story about fantasy and reality. Here is a picture from our story. The princess talking to a frog. Do frogs talk? Remember, fantasy is something imagined. Reality is a real event or situation. Talking frogs and princesses is something that's imagined. We will continue to add more pictures to this chart. Our purpose for listening today is to understand the word contented. We're going to listen carefully to find out if the predictions we made yesterday at the end of part one are correct or not. Let's begin our story. Unwillingly, the princess allowed the frog into the magnificent palace. He bounced up and down as frogs will when they are very happy but she only glared at him dreadfully. She thought to herself, why should I have to keep my promise to this old croaker just because he fetched my ball from the well? Her father insisted, however, that she could be his friend just as she said she would. The frog hopped after her into the great dining hall, boing, boing, and immediately jumped onto the table. So, princess, he said, we shall be the best of friends now, with a contented croak. He began to eat from her shining gold plate and sparkling silver bowl. Frogs do not eat very neatly, I'm afraid, and the princess, noticing how he smeared the food all over his face, turned away in disgust. She refused to look at the frog or speak to him, but she still felt sick just thinking of such an ugly creature eating with her. What a lovely golden plate, the frog remarked. It reminds me of your ball. You have such beautiful possessions, princess. It must be nice to be a princess and have everything you want. If I had everything I wanted, you would not be eating with me. The princess retorted sharply. The princess snapped at him. Is she being very nice? The frog ignored her rudeness. 
May I have a drink from your cup? He asked politely. The princess was about to refuse, but her father caught her eye and she nodded. The frog drank thirstily. Perhaps it was because of that long hop from the well to the palace doors. Would you like to drink now, princess? He asked, nudging the cup in her direction. You must be joking, she snapped. Princesses do not drink after yucky frogs. The frog sighed and continued eating, but soon he began to look sleepy. I'm tired, princess. Will you take me up to bed? I could never have such a slimy frog in my bed, the princess burst out. Her father was about to scold her, but the frog beat him to it. Oh, careful, careful, princess fair. Promises are more than air. What could the princess do? She had promised. So she ran up the stairs to her bedroom and all the way up, she could hear the frog hopping behind her. Boing, boing. And leaving little muddy footprints splish, splash on the castle floor. She opened the door to her bedroom. The beautiful princess and the ugly frog stood in the doorway, looking at the princess's lovely room, hung with silk curtains, beautiful paintings, and jeweled lamps. A thick, soft goose feather quilt lay across her cozy bed, and a full plump pillow waited to support the princess's pretty head. The princess left the frog at the door and climbed into her beautiful bed. She wished the frog would go away, but he sat on the floor looking up at her. I want to sleep on your pillow, the frog said decidedly. The princess shook her head. No, please, you can sleep anywhere you want, just not on my bed. Please, you are just too disgusting, and you leave slime on the pillow. I want the pillow. You promised you would share everything with me. And promises are more than air. The princess pleaded and cried, but nothing could change the frog's mind. Finally, she had to give in. Frustrated, she climbed down and tossed the frog roughly onto the pillow, then climbed back into bed herself. She tried to keep as far away from her new friend as possible. I wish you'd just go away, she hissed into the darkness. The frog was silent for a long moment, then he whispered, Princess, there's one more thing. The princess groaned. Could I have a good night kiss? I have been very lonely frog and you did promise you would love me. The princess was so exhausted, she did not even bother to argue. In the darkness, she rolled over and planted one kiss on the top of the frog's cold, wet head. Now please go to sleep, she begged. Good night, 
croaked the frog. The next morning, the princess woke to find the frog still snoring on the pillow. The princess watched him sleeping for some time. She began to feel impatient for him to wake up, for she found that gross as he was, she preferred arguing with the frog to playing by herself. It was so quiet without him croaking away, finally she poked him hard with her finger. Get up, you lazy toad, she said. The frog did not stir. So, with the palm of her hand, she gave him a rough shove that sent him sliding off the pillow and on to the cold stone floor of her bedroom. The moment his little webbed feet touched the ground, however, the warty frog disappeared and in his place sat a little prince rubbing his eyes sleepily and smiling up at the princess. Hello, princess. Thank you so much for keeping your promise. Who are you? She asked, very much surprised. Why, I'm the frog. A wicked witch living in the forest turned me into an ugly frog, and only you could save me. I knew your heart was just as golden as your plate in your bowl, and I was right. Now I am free of her spell. Thank you, princess. Now I will leave you alone and go back to my home on the other side of the forest. Wait, said the princess. I thought we were supposed to be friends forever. And promises are more than just air, you know. The prince laughed. So they are. Shall we go play with your ball? And together they ran down the stairs and out into the bright golden sunshine. They were friends forever afterward, and when they were quite grown up, they were married with great celebration and joy. They invited the entire kingdom to their wedding, not to mention a number of frogs the prince had met during his long enchantment. They lived happily ever after, of course, and the princess was always glad that she had kept her promise.